Welcome to Module 6. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made it. This is our first module that isn't about figuring out what our stuff costs. This is the first module, I think, since Module 2, that I haven't talked about material, labor, and overhead. This is a transition module to get us into using accounting information to help us make decisions. The first bunch of modules are about using accounting information to figure out how much our stuff costs. Now we're going to learn about decision making. This is a transition model module, though. So we just want to, in this module, figure out how a company's costs work. Not thinking of material labor and overhead, just thinking generally around the idea of costs. So when we introduce costs back in module like one, I, I would have talked about a cost now, again, our y-axis is always our cost and our x-axis, I call it activity, it's like the number of units made. So let's say we are a uh, car manufacturer um, and we are making cars and so whether I make one car or a thousand cars out of my factory, my property taxes will be the same. If I make zero cars or a thousand cars, the fact that I just own the factory building means my property taxes are the same. and so property tax behaves like this, right? It doesn't matter if I have zero cars or a thousand cars produced in the factory. The the company or the, the city that charges me property tax doesn't do it based on my productivity. Uh, so property tax, we would say, is a fixed cost. And fixed costs on a graph look like that. There's a straight line from left to right. Um, on the other hand, we have variable costs. So maybe every car we install, I have no idea how many airbags go in a car. Let's say eight airbags. Well, if I have one car, that's eight airbags, two cars, 16 airbags, three cars, 32 airbags, four cars. I can't do the math. I think my math was terrible there. Three cars, 24 airbags, four cars, 32 airbags, and so on. My airbags cost, if I make zero cars, zero airbag cost. And it'll just go up linearly with the amount of cars I produce. And this, of course, represents a variable cost, a variable cost. Uh, now, a third type of cost that I, I believe we would have introduced, but maybe we did, maybe we didn't. I actually like to think of this like um, certain cell phone plans. I have a prepaid cell phone. It costs me $15 a month as a flat rate, but then I pay per gigabyte that I use. And so it has this fixed cost of $15, but then as I use it, the costs go up, right? And if I use it, a typical month, I'll use it something like, whatever, two gigabytes. I don't use a lot of data, and it might cost me $30 all in per month, something like that, right? So that would be my usage at 30 gigabytes. Well, this has a fixed element, but it also has a variable element. I don't know what happened to my voice there. We call this a mixed cost. And so there's all kinds of different costs. And those are three simple examples. But in fact, real life can be much more complicated. We can have a cost where our employees, you know, we're making some product and they get better. There's a learning curve. The more they make, the cheaper it gets. Maybe because we're volume, volume ordering from a supplier. So we can have a cost that kind of curves downward. We can also, I, I think of um, a utilities bill. When I have my utilities bill, the more power I use, the more they charge me because they're not wanting us to be wasteful with power. So my utilities bill actually goes up. The, the, the slope increases as I use more. So there's a fixed cost for being connected. It goes up slowly and then it starts to sort of go up. There are costs that might behave like this. There are costs that might behave like this. You know, we hit a threshold, we have to invest more. There are costs that might look like mini versions of that, little staircases. Wow, my staircase drawing is not very good, but I, I hope you're getting the idea. Uh, costs come in all kinds of funny shapes and sizes. We can have a cost that's variable for a lot at first, and then the variable costs go down. And, and you know, we have a variety of shapes and sizes. So to help make decisions for a company, we have to make an, an assumption. It's not always a perfect assumption, but it's an assumption we have to make. And I'll explain by 
looking at one of the more complicated costs. So like something that's shaped like this, right? So it's a curvy cost. The assumption we make, and we're going to make it in this chapter and we'll make it going forward to help us make decisions for our company is that costs are linear through the relevant range. Costs are linear through the relevant range. Or a straight line can reasonably estimate a cost through the relevant range. So let's take this com company and this cost. Clearly, whatever the cost, it is not linear. It's very curvy. So the first thing is, OK, very likely, let's just say we're a car manufacturer and this is zero. Well, we're very unlikely to manufacture zero cars. And let's just say this is between you know, in a normal year, we might manufacture 3,000 to 5,000 cars. And so I draw a little line here and I say, okay, this is around 3,000 and this is the cost around 5,000, you know, roughly. Dot, 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 Same here. And so really, we're never going to make more than 5,000. We're never going to make fewer than 3,000 cars at this factory. And so we can kind of ignore all this data here that's the assumption now is it a great assumption it's not a perfect assumption but it's good enough for the types of decisions we're making we're making all sorts of future oriented decisions predictions and we're saying listen when we're making cars at this factory we're always between three and five thousand i don't need to worry about zero and i don't need to worry about like a million way out here you know as this um as this stretches on, I don't need to worry about a million cars because there's no way I'm going to make a million cars out of that factory. So they say, listen, just look at the relevant range. And in that relevant range, in that limited area, can I draw a straight line that is close enough to fitting this data? Well, let's try. So I'm going to draw a straight line here. OK, so I've drawn a straight line. Does it fit my data perfectly? No, right? It's a, it's a little higher in some areas, a little lower in others. It doesn't fit this end at all. It doesn't fit that end at all. But we don't care about those ends. We're worried about the relevant range. And what we end up realizing in this chapter is if we understand how linear math works, we can make powerful decisions about our company. So we make this big assumption. Even though there's all these funny shapes and sizes of cost, we figure out, well, what's the relevant range? And can I draw a straight line through that relevant range that is close enough to reflecting my data? And again, because we're making future uh, predictions, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be close enough. And the answer we've come to is, yeah, a straight line does a good enough job to help us make these predictions, to make decisions about or for our company. So that's what the focus is of this module is one, shaping our data, looking at our data, making sure it fits a straight line, figuring out how to fit a line to our data, and then using that linear math to make decisions for our company. Now, you might recall this formula if you've taken an intro math class. Uh, I'll use the math terms on the bottom here in red. Y is called, actually, well, Y is just Y. M is the slope of the line, B is the intercept of the line. And what I mean by slope, slope is the steepness of the line, the intercept is this point here where it inter goes through the y-axis. Um, now for us in accounting, we put different terminology on this, but it's the exact same concept. Y is our cost. M is our cost per unit, variable cost per unit, essentially. X is our activity level. And B is our fixed cost. So knowing what, which of our costs are variable and fixed 
is going to become really useful in the next chapter. If you have done something called break-even analysis or CVP, cost volume profit analysis, which we will do in this course, you'll see variable and fixed costs are useful. This chapter, we use these assumptions and we use the formula of a line to figure out which of our costs are variable and which are fixed, assuming linearity, assuming everything falls into the shape of a line. So let's jump into some examples and uh, I think you're going to really start to follow how this works. Stay tuned for our next video. Bye for now.